Hi everyone and welcome back to Kicking It with K-Tab. Uh, I have a really special guest for this segment. Uh, and when I say special, I mean special because this person chose of his own free will to spend about the last 33 years of his life with me. And it takes some kind of special to choose to do that. Guy's patient. He's the inspiration for all of my hot cop books. My go-to guy. Um, he's my alpha and I absolutely adore him. So we're going to give him a call, and the reason I'm going to have him as my guest today is because uh, many of you know he's a retired police officer. He's also a licensed private investigator here in the state of California, and he's been doing some pretty interesting cases lately, and I just kind of wanted him to impart a little bit of information uh, in case anyone out there... Um, you know, needs some help. He's, he's, that's what he does. And he loves doing it. He's, a, he's a great guy. So here we go. And I do have a couple of questions posed on Twitter that hopefully we'll be able to get to. This is the first installment. Hello. Hey baby. Hey, what's up? Not much. What's up with you? Uh, I just sitting at the computer doing some stuff. Okay, well, um, I have you on speaker, and you are, I, I'd say you're live, you're live, not live, uh, for my Kicking It With K-Tab program. You're my second guest, and you're my most special guest, because uh, only a special person would put up with me for as long as you have. I'm still waiting for the award. <laughs> the award is you get to wake up to this every single morning <laughs> anyhow um one of my uh one of the people on twitter said wants to know just how awesome it is you know being married to this and i'm pointing <laughs> I, i'm pointing to myself it is just beyond on belief. It's, it's like Disneyland every day. I'm an e-ticket ride, aren't I, baby? You've been an e-ticket <laughs> ride since e-ticket rides were available. Yeah, that's why we've been together for 32 years. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> let's leave it at that. Um, so Christina Travaskis wants to know, um, what, what are the cases that give you the most satisfaction to solve? Um, I've got a, a, a motto that says, or, or it's my quote, okay, that says, I enjoy getting over on people who are trying to get over on other people. And those other people end up being my clients. So if there's somebody out there that you're trying to get over on one of my clients, for whatever the reason, whatever the situation is, I am going to take a lot of pride in getting over on them and thus protecting my client or getting my client the information that they need or whatever the, the case may be. I am an advocate for my clients. Uh, I do not like people being preyed upon. I don't like when people are treated like victims and I don't care for predators unless I'm the predator. And as far as that goes, I'm not a wolf, but I am a sheepdog. So I'm gonna protect the herd from the wolves. And you do that very well, my love. Thank you. Uh, what do you miss most about being a cop? The action and the camaraderie. Yeah. The only thing I ever wanted to do was be a street cop. And for 14 years, I got to do that. It was rock and roll almost every night. Um, it was pushing that envelope many, many times. Yeah. I and the, the camaraderie of a squad and pulling together in a uh, horrible or very dramatic situation, coming out on top, high fives all around, and then hitting the bar after shift. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I can remember quite a few, uh, what were they called? Uh, what well, choir practices uh, at our house and waking up... Um, 
to cops jumping off my roof into my swimming pool and many well, that of was, that was only because the deep end was close enough to the roof to do that oh, yeah. the shallow end we wouldn't have done that yeah well maybe some would have and not lived to tell about it i i can remember uh stepping over passed out bodies of the children <laughs> getting them off to school in the morning and and then the the kids coming home from school and the same body still passed out and fixing everybody a late uh, well, uh, uh, late breakfast and getting them off uh, to work so that they could do it all over again. We had a lot of fun, a lot of good guys. Um, but you knew that both you, the children, and the house were being protected. So. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what one piece of advice would you give to your children and your family? Be aware vigilant, head on a swivel. You know, criminals are never looking for the uh, the difficult victim. Criminals are looking for the easy prey, much in the same way that a lioness hunts a, a herd of gazelles. Notice, notice you said lioness while the old lion is laying on his back, scratching his whatever, waiting for Chiquita to bring home the the gazelle. Okay, sorry about that. Go ahead. And so, who is not only the king, but the smarter of the beast? Anyway. <laughs> well, obviously, it takes some smarts to go out and hunt dinner. It takes a lot more to sit home and urge that other <laughs> I was going to say, I think the smarter is the one that gets the chick to go out and do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. Go ahead. But back on point, you know, people need to keep their hands up and their wits about them and their heads on a swivel looking around because when your head is down in your cell phone or you have that look of panic or that look of don't prey on me, you shy away from looking people directly in the eye and you scurry, the bad guy is looking for that. The bad guy pulls into the parking lot cruises around, finds a vantage point to watch, and waits. And when that one individual appears that provides him with the best opportunity, that's when he's going to prance on it. I always tell my clients, the seminars that I give to women, you don't need to go into the grocery store, as an example, with your purse. If you take your purse and put it on the table in front of you and remove from everything that you absolutely have to have going into the grocery store, Okay. Inevitably, almost everybody pulls out their wallet, their keys, and their cell phone. Now pick up the wallet. What inside of the wallet do you absolutely have to have in that grocery store? It's either your ATM card or it's cash. Put the wallet back in the purse, put the cash in a pocket, put it in your brassiere, do the same thing with your cell phone, and hold your keys in such a fashion as to use them as a striking, slashing instrument if necessary. And then stride with confidence from your vehicle into the store. Do your shopping, come out as you're walking back to your car, head on a swivel, as you're putting your groceries away, you put a bag in, you look around, you put a bag in, you give a quick look around, you put a bag in. These are the things that will keep people from becoming victims. It's the gal who comes out of the grocery store overburdened with everything, purse on the arm, pushing the cart with all the groceries, isn't paying attention, spends all of her time with her head in the back of the, the vehicle because she has all the groceries in. She's the one who's going to get hit. You're when right. you get to the car, if you are carrying that purse, when you get to the car, the first thing you do is you unlock the car, you put the purse inside, you shut the doors. Now you've made it more difficult for somebody to get to your valuables. But I'm a real strong advocate of just leaving the purse in the car where it can't be seen right from the get-go. I agree. And you know that, well, I've learned from you. My cell phone goes in my bra, my credit card, and my... Driver's license go in my bra. Got to always have the lip gloss. That goes in the bra. And my glasses. Yeah, because you need lip gloss when you're picking out produce. I need lip gloss all the time, Gary. And you know that. It, I, I do not travel without lip gloss. Um, 
And you know, another thing that I've heard you say to our children, to me, to family, to friends, to women who call you because they're freaked out that their husband's having an affair. And, and what is that that you always, always say? If you think they're doing it, if your gut tells you they're doing it, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're doing it. That's right. Follow your gut because it won't steer you wrong. And here's another gut thing. You know, um, you and I, we love watching our datelines and our 48 hours, all that reality stuff. And it just gets more gruesome and horrible and evil, it seems, with each one that we watch. And so many times the victim said, I got out of my car and it just didn't feel right. I got out of my car and I thought, that's odd that my light's out. Or I was walking down the street and I saw these two guys coming and I just had a feeling. You know, and, and I don't want to get into politics or anything like that, but, you know, if you're afraid and your gut tells you that something's not right, uh, I'd rather be politically incorrect if I'm wrong um, and alive than dead and, you know, not wanting to hurt someone's feelings. I totally agree. Right now, my gut is telling me I have an appointment I've got to get to. Okay, baby. I love you. Thank you. This will be the first installment of many. And I'm sure we'll have some more questions for you. And when you get back from your appointment, I'm going to take you out to dinner. And we need to talk about that pivotal scene that I need to write that you've been dragging your feet on helping me with. Okay, I love you. Is my check in the mail for this? Yeah, your check's in the mail, all right. Your e-ticket. Your e-ticket's in the mail. All right. Bye-bye. I love you, baby. Bye. Love you too. Bye. Okay. So, um, that is, you know what? I, I, I'm going to make this kind of a once a month thing because he's got all kinds of good stuff. I didn't want to go over our time. Anyhow, uh, that was the hubster. It, you know, if you have any questions for him uh, or if you want some work done by him, he can do all kinds of stuff via the computer. He can find anybody. He can get dirt on anybody. Um, he's a great investigator. He's always thinking five steps ahead of the bad guy. He's very patient and he's brilliantly sneaky. Uh, you can email me at Karen, K-A-R-I-N, Tabke, T-A-B-K-E, at Gmail, and just ask me a question. Uh, if you are serious and need some help, uh, I'll, I'll forward his information to you. Okay? So until next time, it was fun kicking it with my hubby, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.